Hi folks, here we go again. Uh, today we're going to continue the discussion on the formal definition of limit. Um, I also I want to mention this is this is one of the hardest parts of the course I think. Uh, it's not going to be doing this every day, but this is this is I think this is important so that you understand what a limit really really means. Um, anyway, the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l means for any epsilon you can find a delta so that if if x is within delta units of a then then f of x is with, is with is within epsilon units of l okay and you should be able to state that exactly what, what's written here and uh, the key to understanding it of course is to understand what the picture says and also I think oh, it's, it's important to understand the epsilon happens first by by first picking an epsilon the, the, the size of epsilon, which is the radius of this of this width along the y-axis, that will probably determine the the size of of delta, which is, which is the radius of the interval along the x-axis. The smaller the epsilon, the smaller the delta usually. Okay, let's try this one. So uh, if you just think about what the definition of a limit says, uh, for any epsilon there is a delta such that if zero is less than absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then f of x minus l and absolute value is less than epsilon, then your a would have to be 3, your function would have to be x squared, and your l would have to be 9. So this is just another way of saying the limit as x goes to 3 of x squared equals 9. Okay, let's try another one. This one Again, think about what the definition of limit is. Um, for any epsilon, there is a delta such that if 0 is less than absolute value x minus a is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. So here, a is what? You see that's kind of sneaky, isn't it? a is actually negative 3. So the limit as x goes to negative 3. What is f of x? f of x would be this radical here square root of x squared plus 7, and then l is 4. Is that true? Is it true that the limit as x goes to negative 3 of this equals 4? Okay, so let's look at this example. You want to find a delta so that uh, if x is within delta units of 4, then the square root of x minus 2, the, then the absolute value of the square root of x minus 2, this, this would have to be f of x, is less than 0.1. So uh, we're going to actually find the delta for a specific epsilon. So th this is another thing I could ask you to do. Uh, in terms of a limit, isn't this just saying that the limit as x gets close to 4 of the square root of x equals 2? So let let's draw a picture of this. Let's see if we can find the delta algebraically, and then I'll show you how to use your ti to do it also. All right, so if we draw this function, the square root function, it's kind of like that and we're getting close to 4, right? So, let's approximate. This is about 2. All right. So, what is what is what is delta? Oh, I'm sorry. What is epsilon in this case? Is an epsilon 0.1? So, if epsilon is 0.1, then uh, then you you could call this I'm going to exaggerate this a little bit. Ep epsilon is 0.1. This is 2.1, and this would be say um 1.9. So I have to find the delta around 4 so that if, if x is in there, the f of x is in this band. Okay? Well, if you see where these cross, then that, that, that's, that's the key. This, let's call this x1, let's call this x2. Isn't it true, folks? If I could find x1 and x2, then I could find the, the interval. Remember, it's going to be the smaller of the two intervals. I'm all, so how would you find x1 algebraically? If it lies on the graph, when you take the square root of x1, don't you have to get 1.9? So what we could say is we could say the square root of x1 is 1.9. If you, if you square both sides, you get that x1 equals 3.61. And similarly, the square root of x2 has to lie on the graph also, so it has to equal 2.1. And, and when you square both sides, x2 equals 4.41. So, what is this distance from here to here? If this is 3.61, if you subtract 4 minus 3.61, I believe you get 0.39. And if you, if you subtract 4.41 minus 4, you get 0.41. So let me ask you, what should, what should delta be? 
so that I have a symmetric interval around 4. Should, should delta be 0.39 or 0.41? Delta is the smaller of the two because you want a symmetric interval. Isn't it true if you chose 0.41 on both sides of 4, well, wouldn't you get some um, x values outside this interval and, and, it might, and the f of x's might not be in the band? So there you go. It's always possible. Uh, let me ask you this. If instead of 0.1 for, um, for epsilon, if I had chosen 0 0.01, would delta be bigger or smaller? Think, think about that. Anyway, uh, we'll talk about that in class. Uh, anyway, let's, let's just do it. Um, there are going to be some times when you might not be able to solve algebraic. Let me show you how to use your graphing cal calculator to do the same thing. Anyway, let me redraw this picture real quick. This is f of x equals square root of x. And we're talking about the limit as x goes to 4 equaling 2. Again, same thing. This is 2.1. This is um, 1.9. And I, I could find x1 and x2 uh, using, using the intersect feature as well. But let's talk about that. Um, what you would do is you're going to enter y1 equaling square root of x, y2 equaling 1.9, and y3 equaling uh, 2.1. And what I'm going to try to do, folks, is I'm going to try to re recreate this, and then we'll use the intersect feature. How about that? So let's see here. Um, enter y1 is the square root of x, y2 is 2.1, y3, oh, I got it backwards doesn't make any difference. 1.9. Alright, so I want to get a graph. Let's go zoom decimal. Um, that's, pr that's probably not as really what I'm after here. Uh, I want to get a, a little zoom, or zoom in around x equal 4. So why don't I chose, choose something like, I don't know, instead of 0, how, how about uh, 3 to 5 on x? Since I want to look x around 4. And don't, don't I want y around 2? Uh, so why don't I go, how about a little bit below 2, like 1.8? and 2.2. You gotta play around with this. Um, is that better? Okay. Yeah, that's good enough. So I'm gonna find where those graphs cross uh, by using second calc intersect. And the first curve is the square root function, hit enter. The second curve is 2.1, or it's the on my end it is, hit enter. And now it says guess. So you move close to that point um, and I get that uh, this is this is be on my previous one. This is x2, isn't it? X2 becomes 4.41. So this point right here is 4.41. Now to find the other point of intersection, you go second calc intersect. My first curve is the square root function. Now for the second hit enter once. For the second curve, I don't I don't want 2.1. I want 1.9. So if you go down arrow on your um, cursor thing, it moves you down to this other graph. This is what I want is y2. Uh, hit enter again and then guess, enter, get close to that point, enter a third time, and you get 3.61. This is especially helpful because there might be times, like I said before, you might not be able to solve the equation algebraically. So anyway, you'd come up with the same, the same value. The shortest distance is 0.39, so you pick delta equal 0.39. So, so again, that's, that's what I would ask you to do. I, I could give you a, um, give you a, uh, a situation like this and has you have you find a delta for a specific epsilon so practice that uh, and all the last thing I want to say is in class um, remember there's there's a um, actually three formal definitions that we're going to cover in class the one that we've covered we've just covered the limit as x goes to a of f of x equals l we're going to cover two more in class so you should be able to in general you should be able to to do this for all all three of them Alrighty, we're done. We'll talk to you later.